This video is about frame analysis. In this video, you're going to learn another simulation technique to simulate the shear force and uh, support reaction and bending moment distribution across this beam. In the previous video, you learned how to do the beam, beam or column analysis. In this video, we, are, we will be working on Autodesk Inventor frame analysis simulation environment, which is a different type of simulation technique to simulate a problem regarding beams. In this case, uh, I have 25 Newton loading your cell 1, 10 Newtons loading your cell 2. The distances between the loading is specified. The total length of the beam is specified. We need to model this frame, uh, model this beam using frame generator on Inventor. Then we will be able to use the frame analysis tool to simulate this problem. So open Inventor, ensure your units are specified as millimeters and the drawing standard is ISO. Open assembly, click on create, specify the part name. You can specify it as frame or beam analysis. Click anywhere on the screen and start 2D sketch. Select the plane of your choice, specify the length. In this case, it is given to me at 11 meters. So I will specify the length as 11 meters. Press enter, finish the sketch, and double check your dimensions you have substituted. For example, 11,000 millimeters, that is correct. Go back to the assembly environment. From here, save your file first, you can say that frame analysis. You can name it anything, save it. Once it is saved, uh, the next step is to go to design, insert frame. You can select the frame of your choice. For example, I'm going with a square tube and ISO 8 by 8 mild steel. Okay. Press OK. You can select the tube of your choice from here. Once you have done this, click on Frame Analysis and it will open the simulation environment for frames for you. Click on Create Simulation. Ensure you are using Static Analysis. Name the simulation. You can say that Frame Analysis. Plus OK. The next step is to specify the loading. Okay, you can suppress the gravity. We are not concerned with gravity at the moment. We are concerned with only the loading which is given to us. Okay, you can specify the material from here as well, which is by default mild steel, because once you generated the frame, you have specified the material there as well. The next step, you always work from left to right. The next step is to specify the constraints, the boundary conditions. So I'm adding a custom constraint because I want to fix it from in X and Y axis. I don't want to fix in the Z axis. So click on this end and for in rotation, you can say that Z, Z axis uplift, none. Displacement will be fixed in all the axis but rotation will be fixed. It will not be able to rotate in Z axis. You need to do the same custom constraint on the other side. For in the rotation, uplift none for Z axis. It is Z axis for me. If you have selected any other plane for your beam, ensure that your custom boundary conditions are looking somewhat like this. Okay, where it is constrained in X and Y axis, and it is in uh, the degree of freedom in rotational degree of freedom in Z axis has been constricted. So double check your you can double check your axis from here as well. In which axis you have restricted, for example, in Z, I have uplift none. The next step is to specify the loading. It can be force, it can be continuous load, it can be a moment as well. In our case, a force is given to you transverse loading. 
So click on force. Select on the line where you want to apply the force. It says offset. Okay, offset. Uh, it could be the distance from here or it could be the different distance from here. Assuming this is 11,000 meters. Uh, assuming this distance is from this region here. So it says magnitude of the force. You can specify the magnitude of the force first, which is 25 newtons. So under 25 newtons, once you have specified the magnitude, press OK. Double click on the force again and now change its angle because right now I want it to be applied from the top like that, a vertical loading. In order to do this, it says angle of plane is zero, angle in plane is 180 degrees. So angle of plane, I want to change it to, let's say, 270 degrees. It will change the angle of plane. Now angle in plane, I want it to be 90 degrees so that it can be applied from the top. You can play around with these dimensions and double check whether you are getting the same results as this. And offset distance should be, uh, from this point, it should be just two meters, which is 2000 millimeters. So you can specify the option offset distance like this. Press OK, and this will make this force for you. The next step is to specify the force again. Select the force, select the uh, magnitude, for example. Now the magnitude for the other force is 10 newtons for me. I will specify the magnitude. The next step is to uh, specify the angle of plane and angle in plane. Angle of plane is again 270 degrees. And angle in plane should be 90 degrees. And offset distance from the start is 7 meters for us. So we'll specify the offset distance. The distance is given to me as 7 meters. So I will specify that. So 7 meters should be 7,000 millimeters. Press OK. And you have specified the boundary conditions, including the material, the supports, and the loading. The next step is just to click on simulate. Once you have got the results, click on beam details and select the beam. It's, it's automatically selected from here. You just need to click on the line to select the beam. Visualize the results, especially the forces forces in X, forces in Y, and you will be able to view the results. Now, one thing you will notice, the shear force diagram should have come as a straight line for us, but it's not coming initially. So this could be a potential fault you can mention in your discussion. How to resolve this fault is here, click on frame analysis settings, click on solver, beam points, and specify 1000 beam points, you can, the more finer beam points you have, the more accurate results you are going to get. So click on beam simulate again. Click on beam details, FX, F5, select the beam first. And now you can view the, this is almost a straight line now. The more beam points you have, the better results you're going to get. This is exactly a straight line, but the more beam points you have, it will divide the beams into thousand points. You can visualize from here as well. You can view these small points mentioned on the beam. So this is what you have done. You have divided the beams into each small parts, and this is giving you more accurate results. You can double check your support reactions from here. How much is the support reaction on this side? How much is the support reaction on the other side? Numerically, the reactions are given here as well. 24 newtons in Y and reactions should be given for the other constraint as well, which is 10.9 for the other constraint. You can visualize the reactions. You can visualize the shear force by this method with, with the bending moment. You need to understand that your units are in millimeters, Newton per millimeter. So the shape of the bending moment will be approximately similar as compared to what you have uh, done in the beam column calculator or by your hand calculations. 
but the units will be different so does the values will be different as well but the maximum bending moment is again at the point where the shear force changing from positive to negative side that's how you will run a beam or column analysis using inventor beam simulator